I mean, if you, if you, once again, if you were a celebrity and you start to notice how many tweets people added you for obvious reasons and you can't obviously read them all, which is how social media works. When people like tweet at you so many times, whenever they're just fans of you or whenever it's controversial or what, or all the above, like you barely get to read everyone's tweets. I have a Twitter account myself. If I had the same amount of subscribers that Pirates and Open has, and if I were to read every single tweet, I wouldn't be able to do that either. I wouldn't be able to read every single one of them if every second. That's how popular Pirates and Uncle is, just like every other celebrity out there. Not every celebrity reads read, reads all the tweets or likes all the tweets from their fans. And Pyro needed a break from social media because of the thousands of tweets that he was getting prior to the time he regularly uses Twitter that that in the video there Ivory mentions his age around December 16th. I just don't understand how some people don't get that. Like, it is very hard to look at everybody's tweets, and I can see it because I basically knew time and time again, once before, like a couple of years ago, that it is hard for a YouTuber to read every single tweet. That it's hard for a movie star to read every single tweet. That it's hard for a TV actor or TV actress to read every single tweet. It's even harder for a movie actress to read every single tweet as well. Including, including many popular song artists. Who, who are on Twitter and they can't basically read every single tweet from their fans. Do you guys read every single tweet from your fans? I don't think so. Because you get thousands of them. So at this point, I re wouldn't actually reach to Pyro that, in that way, which I did mention that in the first recap, that he did not ask him directly via DMs. Had I redone that during the time he last mentioned on December 16th that Pyros got got the screenshots saying that I knew that I mentioned that he was 15 had Pyro would have seen it would have Ivory mentioned it to him directly and he did not mention to Pyro directly when Pyro was last on Twitter because again he gets thousands of tweets from his fans all of them so it wouldn't be wise for Pyro to actually go through everyone's tweets and read and then read Iris. It wouldn't be wise because it will hurt his mental state and it wouldn't be good for his mental health. And that is why he took off on December 28th until six months later.
makes are so interchangeable, I'm just going to tackle both at once. Pyrocynical never saw the initial DM from Ivory saying he was a minor. Pyrocynical never saw the DM where Ivory sent him his Twitter profile, clearly stating his age. The next part really confuses me because now the claim is because he linked his Twitter, which had his age in his bio, I now retroactively know that when this message or that message was sent, I knew he was 15. What? When Ivory linked me his Twitter profile, the age in bio says 16. This is something I acknowledged in my Reddit post, but to be fair, I probably didn't elaborate enough on it. In retrospect, I never should have continued the furry stuff with him once I learned of his age, even though at the time, I didn't see it as a problem. Legally, age of consent is 16 in both my country and his state. I didn't consider the age gap significant enough because what we were talking about and doing was so far removed from actual sex. It literally was just fantasy furry garbage because I didn't consider Ivory sexual in any way in person. I never I never had a plan to progress our friendship into something more, and I never considered it an issue. I understand though that, you know, this is going to be one of those weird grey areas where people are going to agree or disagree. I think it's a combination of all of these variables coming together, which led me to believe at the time there was nothing wrong from a moral standpoint. As for the other message, I don't remember seeing this message, and I'm not sure why it's being used as proof that I knew he was 15, because if you compare the dates, this message was sent two months after he sent me his link with his age in bio. The last two points of this segment, I want to tackle both at once here as well. Paracynical, who at the time was expressing interest in Ivory and being in a relationship with him at the time, which was corroborated by Paracynical's at the time soon to be girlfriend, still never knew Ivory's age. An age with Ida clearly acknowledged and an age which she thought would not dissuade him from being in a relationship with Ivory. Somehow Ivory never mentioned his age and no one else mentioned his age in the presence of Pyrocynical outside of all these clear instances, even once. So here they're trying to make it seem impossible I wouldn't have known his age or had to do some kind of like insane mental gymnastics to never find out. But if you look at the DMs Ivory provided himself for this document, you can see that he's confiding with Ida about age being a problem. Keep in mind as well, I was not in a relationship with Ida until about mid-2019. This document claims it as soon to be, but like, it's a whole two years before we actually start dating, and two whole years before this conversation took place. I mean, we both talked before, but we weren't close. She had no reason to confide with me with someone else's private information. So back when Ivory opened up to Ida about something private, there is no guarantee that she would have came and told me, despite the fact that this document and videos based off this document claim it as concrete, irrefutable proof. This right here tells me that the conversation is real, thus proving that Pyro did know of Ida's age. But the conversation was between Ida and Ivory, so, you know, Ida may have not told Pyro. Yeah, that claim's flat out retarded. I mean, at this point, you're implying that Ida has some sort of secret vendetta to take down Pyro and purposefully withdrew this information in order to bring him down. Kinda fucking ridiculous, don't you think? Why would Ida think to tell me about a random conversation that she had with someone over two years ago? The messages from Ivory regarding a relationship were completely one-sided. If it helps for context, because we're being so open here, I'm straight, IRL, like, I have no interest in guys. This is just purely like a weird fantasy and it does not carry over into the real world whatsoever. But one thing there is no excuse about is Ida attacking Ivory in DMs once he posted about me. What she said is deplorable and I don't agree with it at all. It did come from an emotional place but that is not an excuse. Now one way the document tries to criticize my initial statement is the fact that I used evidence that was later retracted. One of them was a Twitter thread of someone trying to prove that I was innocent and someone else is an individual that Ivory had sent King stuff to. The thing is though, with this information retracted, my original statement isn't debunked. The document fixates on this specific fact that people withdrew information while ignoring so many points like what I mentioned earlier. On top of that as well, the person who made the thread defending me recently came out and said at no point did he actually apologize for making that thread and his words have been twisted and put in this document to be used against him. The reason why I used these Twitter screenshots against him is the fact that I felt his accusations came from a place of dishonesty. We spoke casually on and off until September of this year. I provided screenshots of our conversations that were posted in my Reddit statement. There was no bad blood. And then when other people came out on Twitter saying that they also had dishonest experiences with him, I used that to further my own belief that these accusations were made for the sake of it. Me
So, to do another recap of one of the key points that I have. Legally, the age of consent is 16, as Pyro Seneca explained both in the U.S., right here in my country, where I live, is the U.S., and in the U.K., where he lives. And at the time, Pyro Seneca thought it was okay, because, of course, there was no sexual exchange. Again, there was no sexual exchange. I mean, yeah, he shared some some furry stuff, but other than that, there was never any sexual exchange. And the follow-up is that Pyro did not want anyone to find out that he was a furry for com for being a complete degenerate. For, for doing a role play of being a furry. And I'm gonna continue on a third recap in just a moment. Were made for the sake of it, me including the anecdotal evidence led to the belief that Ivory lied about his age. That is never a claim I have made that he has done to me. I've only said that I did not know his age at 15, which in turn has caused more people to believe that I lied in my original statement. I just want to say though, this is not an excuse. It is entirely my responsibility to verify age. But this never escalated from two morons talking about inhaling fairy farts, and I never intended it to. There go, grooming. There's a message that was used of me basically having a breakdown that was put in Ivory's original post saying pretty much how everyone's going to find out and I have to keep looking over my shoulder like my paranoia was through the roof. And this has been twisted, of course, to make it seem that I am guilty for grooming a 15 year old. I think it's quite obvious what like I'm actually worried about. I didn't want the public to find out that I was a complete degenerate and into this like very roleplay shit. And Anyone would be embarrassed by that. I haven't had any conversations remotely resembling this for the past three years. But of course, I still did and still kind of do hate myself for it. That being said, over the last couple of weeks, I've learned to embrace it because <laughs> that's all I can do now. Now, this is a good time actually to discuss a Discord conversation that was leaked where I'm asking someone for a way to like mass delete Discord messages. Very obvious explanation. I was shit scared of the public finding out that I was a complete degenerate. And you know, pretty much just being kink shamed for all eternity. But this has now been twisted into like me trying to hide evidence of grooming to escape internet justice. They're trying to make it out to be far more insidious than it actually is. And it, it, it's sick. People seem to be choosing like what part of my statement to run with instead of acknowledging all of it. They twist what they want to twist misinterpret what they want to misinterpret and then they just ignore the rest i'm just again amazed how people read this document and just believed it at face value the problem is i have with this drama that there is no middle ground originally ivory was labeled as a manipulative cloud chaser that could do no wrong because people chose to believe my screenshots over his. And you turn out to be what a lot of people were calling you from the start. A cloud chaser trying to ruin someone's career on YouTube, let alone on the internet, for attention. But now those same people are saying I'm guilty because they read this document and didn't bother to cross-reference it with my original statement. Not only is there proof of Pyro knowing that Ivory was underage, but definitive proof that the messages were real, along with other damning evidence too. And also, these are the same people that say, I shouldn't take my time with this response. It's gone too far and too much has come out for him to take his time with it, like he did with his last response. There needs to be a middle ground. I did fuck up. There is no excuse, and I am sorry for that. But I am not a groomer or a predator, and documents like these only try to show one side and build a narrative that I'm a liar when I have never actually changed my story from my original post. My mistake, if anything, And again, some people who defended Pyro are the same people who said that Pyro lied about not knowing I reached Ivory's age, which again is false.
Hyperson Post says that he that there is no middle ground anywhere. And that he's not a groomer or a predator. Which I believe that that Pyro Cynical is being 100% truthful here because if he did, if he actually did predatorial things, which in my book it would never be okay to do, then there would be actual evidence to support those claims. Now, there is no actual evidence to support those claims because that never actually happened. He didn't groom Ivory. Ivory used that term grooming very wrong. And I feel that Ivory should have been the person to do a thorough research on the word grooming before he uses it in a in a sexual assault or uh, grooming sick uh, accusation to back up his claims. Because I never believed Ivory from the start, and I don't plan on doing that. And I didn't really plan on taking this side either. Because in November, as I said before, in November, around Thanksgiving, he kind of tweeted something here. But yeah, I'll get to that in just a moment. And I'm going to read the other part as to why Random Dude was later suspended after that. If anything was not being clearer, I have never tried to hide anything. This document has managed to fool so many people. Like, you've got this person. They came to all my meet and greets and their dress was my character the effort they went to was insane but thanks to this document they've recently came out claiming that i was only nice to them because i had an ulterior motive the document also tackles a tweet ivory made where he says he hates me and i'm a leech this was a copy pasta and it was like so easy to disprove the majority of people found out as soon as you like copy pasted the actual tweet into the search bar i didn't even think to mention this in my original statement because it was totally beside the point. I think it was included here as a way to make Ivory's claim seem more genuine without having to do any actual work. Why would you try so hard to debunk a claim 20 people complained about on Twitter, but yet ignore the fact that I provided exact dates of my Twitter suspension? Another argument Parasynical made lies in the idea that Ivory messages other people of similar age around the same time. They then show a screenshot that I posted of Ivory talking about the cringer furry stuff with someone else. Ivory then posted the rest of the conversation on Twitter, and it really doesn't change the narrative much, apart from adding that he wants to be left alone. At the time, I felt it was more than fair that I show an example of Ivory having a similar conversation with someone else, and how he wasn't affected by it as he claims he was with me. He still excused the guy, there was no call out post on him, and I think it was fair to question that, like why didn't he see a problem? Now, I understand I have a lot more reach and power, a much larger platform, but... <sighs> This document goes as far as to compare me to legitimate predators like Kiwis. Someone who sent and received nudes to a 14 year old girl, lied about it ever happening, and then his excuse was, don't trust girls. People fuck up like teenagers. Teenagers are stupid, man. And I'm fucking, I fucked up being, you know, it was really irresponsible. I shouldn't have trusted this girl. I shouldn't have. They also post a screenshot of Ida saying that I did this with everyone. There's this one part of the doc that claims that people make the mistake of not watching an entire video before they pass judgment. And this is like bitterly ironic. You make that claim, but you leave so much out of my original statement. It's written with like such cruel intentions and 
it waits until page 16 out of 19, only then to confirm that I never actually sent or received nudes. I like as well how they just hit it in the middle of that huge paragraph. It also tries to twist conversations like this one, you know, like claiming that this isn't part of the roleplay, but discussing the hypothetical of having sex with Ivory. No context, no conversation before, no conversation after. You're just meant to interpret this as 100% I wanted to have sex with him in person. This document probably never thought I'd actually respond to it piece by piece because, you know, the, the majority of the messages, they're so fucking bad to look at. This document is cowardly. I mean, like, the ending is no exception. Like, they, they don't even definitively state if I groomed anyone. They just leave enough room for people to draw that conclusion themselves without openly saying it. Even if this... All right, and uh, speaking of the Twitter account of HT, HTML random dude. He was suspended on Twitter for unknown reasons after debunking Ivory's claims. And if we all know one thing, Twitter doesn't fully explain why Twitter account is actually sent for, meaning that Twitter is not transparent enough. And if Twitter was transparent, they would email the details as to why your account was suspended for it, and Twitter never does that. And I had the same problem with my account when I once did not ver verify my phone number because Twitter thought I was spamming my tweets, quote unquote, spammy, and uh, I got the same, I got the same treatment as Random Dude d does now, but later on, I eventually found a way to contact Twitter to tell them to reinstate my account and my Twitter account has reappeared. So I hope Random Dude. Uh, gets his Twitter account back soon because I think his evidence of a uh, defending Pyro was uh, really good in my opinion. This was made in good faith. It is a severe case of tunnel vision trying to right a perceived wrong. But I can't just sit here, you know, and let my name get tracked through the mud. On a side note, unrelated to this doc, I've actually seen screenshots circulating around of someone who drew, like, fan art of my Fox character back in 2016. I then apparently replied to them, like, jokingly saying not thick enough, and then asking for their age, and they said 15. So when people saw this, they instantly drew parallels to the grooming allegation. I asked them for a thick version, and they drew this, which isn't even really that different from previous things they drew before even getting into contact with me. I didn't commission it. What was drawn wasn't pornographic. They'd drawn very similar stuff before, and th there was no roleplay here. It was nothing. And the thing is, this wasn't even a call-out post. The person that made the original video just said it was funny. So I'm going to address the Pyrocynical video now. This was in 2015. When this happened, I made that video over a year ago. It was not meant to be taken seriously at all. I'm also wearing the same outfit. It was just a funny story from high school, to be completely honest. That's the only thing that I meant by it. I didn't mean it to be a call-out post. The video is not meant to be taken seriously. That being said, it was incredibly irresponsible of me and not my best look, I admit. But this isn't at all comparable to the current situation. Now, I do want to directly say something to Ivory and apologize to him and to anyone else that I did the furry roleplay garbage with. What seemed consensual and reciprocal may very well not have been. It's not my place to decide. It happened. It was my responsibility to verify age, and I never did, and I am sorry for that. You shouldn't have been put in that situation, and it was stupid of me to message people about this furry stuff without taking into account the influence of my platform, especially considering how sexual the tone of these messages were. It wasn't until later where I decided this was an issue and decided to stop entirely. I hope you can understand the frustration in my original post, but I shouldn't have attacked you, only apologized and defended myself. Now, really good closing note here for anyone that is still confused to any degree. If your accusation is solely Parasynical is a complete degenerate and should have not had these conversations with someone that he didn't realize was 15, you win. I can't dispute that. But if you've either insinuated 
contributed or directly called me a pedophile who groomed someone knowing that they were 15, that is a completely false claim. I've said my piece, I've admitted fault and apologised to the best of my ability. I just want to move on from this. I want it to end. Thank you for watching and hopefully this gives you a more widened view on the situation. So, for the quarter freak out, I wrote, I'm Han Jesus to Avery, Avery and others involved. And he also admits for the last time that he should have verified to the age. And he warned some people who, who claimed that, that Pirate Central is one is not true. Because he explains fully that he is not a predator. Now, I'm going to take you to Ivory's last tweets. Ivory says here that he will never was never going to apologize to anyone for saying grooming because that's what it fucking was. No matter what definition popped up on Google first, and if you think I'll apologize or took accountability by deleting his response and using it to attack my character, then you're wrong. People have literally have literally have fucking notifications for my tweets just to harass me over it. And I'm so done with it. Just leave me the fuck alone if you disagree with what I said. It's been almost a month and I'm trying to move on because I do other things in my life than call people out. Well, if you were, I agree. Can you really explain what happened between Thanksgiving and December 6th? Can you explain that? If you're trying to move on, you don't need to quote tweet Turkey Tom's tweet, which which says proving Parasynical's guilt and new leaks, or plus new leaks it says, which is which linked to the Google document, which I will not show now because this is. This is going to be the end, the end of this video right now, as I am going to give my guy final thoughts on this. And the fact that you deliberately lied on Thanksgiving, saying that you're going to move on, which you didn't, makes you look even bad. And I don't, and if, and had Turkey Tom not made a video defending you, that probably would have been the end. But he had to tweet this out, and you had to not move on. Which means you're not, t t you're not taking your word. You're not really doing that. If you were, if you want people to take your word seriously, then you should not quote tweet Turkey Tom's tweet. If you're trying to move on, I suggest you delete this tweet right away. Instead of quote tweeting, gave you evidence of pyro and I know knowing my age for this document. It's very, very worth a read. And I don't give a shit if it's worth a read. You should have actually moved on. I mean, come on, 10 days prior. Ten. Ten days prior. You should have moved on. Well, 11 days prior, but still, you should have moved on. You should have actually moved on instead of tweeting on December 6th. This is why I don't get about you. 
Ivory. You keep trying to prove your innocence, but after one, one another, one information after another, you completely become disingenuous. That's why I did not believe the victim right away. I did not want to believe you. And now that Pyrocynical finished coming out of his statements, I wholeheartedly am on his side, despite the fact that he did not ask for your age. I'll admit that he did not ask for your age. But you are also in the wrong for not moving on, like you said you were going to do. So the next time you lie on Twitter, make sure it's a good one instead of a horrible, 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 horrible take. It's time you learn, Ivory. It's time you learn.